Government agencies are undertaking an unprecedented period of IT and application modernization. Efforts to effectively collect, manage, and analyze vast volumes of data, combined with needing to operate securely in today's multi-cloud operating environment, has placed tremendous challenges on agency officials to manage IT modernization initiatives. I'm Wyatt Cash with Scoop News Group, and here to talk about how IT officials are addressing some of those challenges is Kelly Fletcher, Chief Information Officer for the United States Department of State. Uh, Kelly, thank you so much for joining us. And let me start by asking, what are some of the biggest challenges that you're facing in managing the rising volume of data while also trying to make data more accessible to a broader range of stakeholders? This is a great question, and this is really where we're spending a lot of our time and energy. Uh, the first thing I want to say is the State Department is hungry for technology. Uh, we are hungry for data. We are hungry for data analytics. Uh, and so this is really, really exciting. So, you know, I think that's step one, right, is do your users know what they can do with data? Do they want data? And the answer is absolutely. Um, the challenge that we have, quite frankly, is, is one that I think many, many agencies face, which is that we have, you know, frankly, decades of technical debt. We have legacy systems, um, you know, that are not really up to modern standards for sharing data, for making data accessible. Uh, the other thing is that the vast, you know, sort of stores of data that we have are in cables. And these cables, you know, they're, they're written globally by folks who have relationships on the ground, um, you know, all over the world. Uh, and their narratives. So we have this trove of really interesting data, decades of data, but it's in narrative format. And so how do we use the right tools to analyze that data and draw conclusions and sort of learn from it, learn from what we already know? Uh, the last thing I wanna do here is acknowledge what is happening in the Center for Analytics under the Chief Data Officer for the US Department of State, Matthew Gravis. Uh, his team is doing something that I think is exactly the right first steps, which is to find hard problems where data can help us solve them. And they're both in the business domain, right? How are we paying people? How are we doing logistics? But they're also in the mission space. So some predictive analytics, you know, how do we know how other countries might vote? What do we see based on past patterns? Uh, it's really, really exciting work, and I do want to give them a shout out. Interesting set of dimensions there to address and appreciate that. Next, let me ask you, how are you approaching the demands for data to move more freely and dynamically across multiple cloud environments? Yeah, so this is something I've thought a lot about. I think as a lot of folks know, I was at DOD and now coming to Department of State. This is a challenge that is universal. Um, and what I would say is at Department of State, I have learned that it's not just, you know, these multiple cloud environments, right? We have a Department of State cloud environment, we have commercial cloud environments, but also I have computing at the edge. And by that, I mean at the posts and embassies. Um, frankly, I think that we need to be very intentional about what data is stored where, what data is processed where. It does not make sense for all of the data that we have to get hoovered into a cloud environment necessarily. Uh, so what that means is, when I need to aggregate data to make decisions to understand patterns, I'm going to need to access data from multiple cloud environments. I'm going to need to access data from, you know, Department of State data centers. I'm going to need to access data from the edge or the data that's at post and embassies. Um, so because of that, you know, we are really relying on our network modernization initiative. It offers us micro segmentation to increase our cybersecurity, but then it also offers direct paths to these data sources. Uh, right now, our network is constructed like a lot of folks are, which is that everything is hoovered back to DC. This can't be how we operate in the future. So that's a big part of it. Uh, thank you so much for explaining that as well. Next, um, talk to us a little about where are you focusing your efforts to protect the security of all that data uh, moving between various IT systems and from the edge, uh, both internally for your folks and you know to other entities as you work with other governments around the world. Absolutely. So cybersecurity is my top priority and where we can, we're coupling cybersecurity with an improved user experience. Um, but cybersecurity is absolutely the thing that we are focused on. Now, first off, I want to say we are employing zero trust. Frankly, this is how we do business today. 
Um, you know, as, as I just talked about with network modernization, that's one pillar of our zero trust strategy. We're in coordination with the federal CIO, the federal CISO, and with our colleagues in CISA. Uh, we're really thankful for sort of the whole of government push to zero trust. Now, one thing that's a little bit unique about the State Department, and I think you touched on it when you talked about sharing, you know, with our international partners, sharing with the public. That is an inherent part of our mission here at the State Department. So a lot of our data is publicly available. We're sharing it publicly. We need that to be easy. We need that to work. Um, but at the same time, uh, we need to have some security standards that are universal for the State Department. So something that has happened historically is that folks have stood up non-enterprise networks. And a lot of times those are mainly designed to share information with the public. Um, I understand why those have been stood up, but I'll tell you they're wildly divergent in compliance with basic cybersecurity standards. Um, some of them are great, some of them are not. Um, and the problem we have there is that this creates, you know, sort of a rich attack surface. So a place that we're focusing on is pulling these non-enterprise networks into our enterprise network where feasible. Uh, we want folks to be able to conduct their mission, uh, but we do need them to have these cybersecurity controls that they can just inherit from the enterprise network. Uh, and then in places where we can't uh, pull them into the, the broader enterprise network, we wanna make sure that they're censored. So I want diplomatic security, the men and women with their hands on the keyboards, really actively defending our networks. I want them to know what's happening uh, for all of state data, not just the data that is on my enterprise network. Well, another topic that we're talking to CIOs about is the fact that, you know, technology is changing very rapidly, exponentially in some cases. How are you trying to strike a balance between achieving economies of scale and, and preserving flexibility and choice as you move forward with IT modernization in light of how rapidly it's all changing? I actually had a conversation about this just last night. So state is a very federated environment. Like I said, we're in, you know, 270 locations. 190 countries all over the world um, and, and we've you know many local bureaus as well and so with this kind of federated IT for emerging technologies I'm talking generative AI uh, I'm talking you know maybe neural networks um, a lot of sort of AI machine learning type of technologies um, we are all working together to figure out what's sort of the what's the realm of the possible what's the best way to use these Obviously, there's some bumpers, you know, there's some cybersecurity bumpers, there's some best use um, policies, but I really want a thousand flowers to bloom. Uh, I want a lot of experimentation. Um, and there are those things that are a little bit more understood, more well understood. How do we do compute and store? In those cases, we're building to enterprise solutions uh, with cybersecurity, especially. So something I'm really focused on is I want IRM, my organization, to build tools for the enterprise to use. So I want consular affairs to host their systems in our environments, and I want them to inherit controls um, from IRM, from, from these enterprise tools. So I would say there's, there's different models depending on the stage of technology. And then lastly, Kelly, I'm intrigued to ask about your move from DOD now to the State Department, if you will. You know, how do you view the state of relations more broadly between federal agencies and technology partners these days? Have they gotten stronger and more productive? And what, what would help unlock greater value in those relationships? So I can say both at DOD and at State, uh, we've had very strong relationships with our in industry partners. You know, whether they're, you know, on site, contractors on site, I consider those folks part of just my team, you know, my my daily operational team, uh, or they're building solutions that we are contracting out with them. Uh, something I'm really excited about here at State is the Evolve contract. So Evolve is going to enable um, sort of department-wide IT purchasing. And what that means is that if I am a vendor and I build something for consular affairs, it's gonna be even easier uh, to provide that capability to another bureau, to diplomatic security or to IRM. Um, and I love having sort of this consistency across. We're really focused on engaging with contractors about what is available as a tool that they can consume. You know, don't build your own identity solution. You can, you can just, you know, use what IRM is providing. Um, and please, you know, build zero trust into your, you know, everything that you're delivering, we need cybersecurity baked in. So, uh, you know, I can say from where I sit, we have never had stronger partnerships. Well, fantastic. 
I, I think the State Department is uh, lucky to be having you on board there. And I want to thank you, uh, Kelly Fletcher, for joining us here and sharing just your insights on uh, ways of dealing with IT modernization, uh, managing data across complex organizations. So thank you for being with us. Thank you very much for having me. And I'm so lucky to be part of the IRM team. <laughs>